Hey friends, I'm uh, Charlie Wade here, your leading expert in pain management and other natural ways to help with chronic disease as well. Um, you see me wearing some weird glasses, right? Um, recall yesterday I was telling you about different things you can do to actually help, you know, really improve your sleep. And I actually am trying out a new pair of blue blocking glasses, but I realized that it has to glare on them. So I raised them above my head so you can actually see my eyes versus having the, the weird uh, glare and things of that sort. But again, this one thing that uh, I, I really impress upon individuals, especially um, when I do one-on-one -on -one consultations uh, um, and, and, and my, and my health coaching, things of that sort, excuse me, um, I try to really impress upon people that sleep is as important as uh, anything else. You know, eating, sleeping, um, eating, drinking, and sleeping are the most important things. Um, you know, it, it's actually a rule of three out there. You can go, um, what, three minutes without having oxygen. You can go three days um, without water. You can go three months without even eating. Um, but we don't know how long you can go without actually sleeping as well. So that's the reason why I say if you master this one thing, you'll see that your health will increase in less than a week. I, I'll say less than a week. The research shows um, uh, several things. When you're sleep deprived, um, and I, I mentioned this a, a little bit yesterday, and when you're sleep deprived, is as if you're walking around in a drunken stupor all day long. Your cognitive ability um, goes down, even if you're an hour and a half um, sleep deprived, your cognitive ability goes down by, by 32%. So uh, again, if, if you're a school um, student, um, if you're an employee or employer or whatever, and you're only functioning about 60% of your mental capacity because you're sleep deprived, you're not really getting a lot out of individuals. And there's a many other things that, um, that goes along with that as well. But um, again, I, I feel, and it's a lot of research that, that's coming out now that's showing that, like I said, sleep is as important as actually feeding yourself good food. I know plenty of individuals who are, you know, vegan, vegetarian, whatever it is, um, eating completely healthy, bodybuilding, and they still aren't able to either lose weight or they have other health issues, and 90% of it is the fact that they're not getting adequate amounts of sleep. So let me go ahead and jump into it a little bit um, faster. You know, sleep, um, uh, being sleep deprived actually shown to um, shorten the lifespan. Look, looking at different tests, looking at different brain markers and also different other um, biomarkers has shown that if you're sleep deprived, you, you're not getting enough sleep on a daily basis, and you're only getting about four hours of sleep a night, your body looks as if you've had a cardiac um, um, issue meaning like you had a stroke or you had some, uh, some other um, cardiac issues. So your lifespan is as if you have been smoking cigarettes all your life as well, even if you're completely healthy, but you're only sleeping about four hours a night. That's just from, from the research itself. The risk of um, obesity and diabetes shoots up, you know, uh, almost like 50 to 60 percent. Um, the risk of you being in chronic pain has been shown that actually a lot of chronic pain individuals um, continue to are in pain because of the fact that their lack of sleep is not allowing their body to rest and also repair itself. The inflammation hormone that um, uh, again creates a lot of um, inflammation and pain inside the body stays higher inside the body and that attaches itself to different cell sites when you are lacking, um, lacking sleep because your body is still trying to rev itself up. So it's causing more inflammation inside of your body as well. So those, uh, again, another few things that I see over and over again um, when we look at some, some of these tests and some of these studies as well is very, very, I mean, and, and, and I think what happens is people um, sort of think that it's very easy for you to catch up on sleep. And that's a very, very, you know, bad fallacy because every time you lose a little bit of sleep, um, you cannot replace that sleep. It's almost like, you know, on a conveyor belt, once that package is gone, it's gone. You, you, it's, it's very hard for you to run down there and pick that package up and, and things like that. So there's a lot of things you have to get done. Once you lose that sleep, you lost that sleep because your body goes through physiologically changes that you know sort of um, sort of acting Ill, that have ill effects on it. Is it good for you to get rest when you can get rest? Of course, it's good for you to get rest when, when you're able to. But long story short, um, the fallacy is this right here, and it, this is why I hear from a lot of my patients, and I hear from a lot of couples and things of that sort. They're like, well. You know, once the kids are asleep, that time when the kids are asleep before you know we actually go to bed is our special time. And and ninety percent of the time, this is what I ask um, the patient. I say, okay, well, so what time do the kids go to bed? Oh, around eight thirty, nine o'clock. So at nine from from nine to what time do you stay up? Well, to about you know eleven, twelve, one o'clock. You know, hanging out. I'm, and I always ask, so what do you do exactly in that time span? 
well, I hang out, you know, with my husband, I hang, hang out with my wife, but what do you do? Do you talk? Do you guys play board games? Like, like, like what do you really do? And 90, I say almost 100% of the time, they say, well, that's when I catch up with my social media, I do some extra work, I read, we watch television, things like that. Things like that is it, it, certainly great. It's phenomenal, you know, to actually spend time uh, with your loved one. But at the same token, if you're doing things that you can actually do early in the morning, versus seeing that just trying to get these things done and actually being, as I, um, I corner of the phrase yesterday, socially, you know, jet lag. That just means that you're trying to stay up just because of the fact that you feel comfortable or, or you feel as if you need to stay up and you really um, should be asleep. So uh, again, if you just learn how to adjust your sleep a little bit, you'll see that your health is actually going to also improve as well. But that's just one example of saying, okay, well, if you go to bed when the kids go to bed at nine o'clock and you slept eight hours, you woke up at like, you know, four thirty, five o'clock in the morning and you have to be to work by nine o'clock. You have four hours to be with your husband, with your wife, and also get some of those, those, those things done. And you feel a lot more alert. Your body is well rested and you're able to actually accept a lot of those brain functioning things that you weren't accept later at night because you're already tired, you're already lethargic, and you're just trying to keep yourself awake. So that's just one example as well. As I was saying before, you know, the World Health Organization has said that working, you know, the shift work, like the ones that like work overnight, things of that sort, they've actually deemed that as being a carcinogen. And a carcinogen basically means that it's, it's putting you at a higher risk to have other, you know, cancers and other diseases inside your body as well. These are very, very well-known facts that when individuals actually are also sleep deprived, we have biomarkers that inside of your brain that we can basically give you, it's called telomeres, that we can actually sort of say, well, how old are you really? I know, um, uh, years ago, um, Oprah had, had this thing on her um, on her show that, that she was given a real life age type thing. And of course, you want to be your real life age or even younger if possible. It's been shown that individuals who are sleep deprived usually um, score about 10 to 15 years older. So if you're 30, you're really living a life as a 45 year old individual. If you're 45, you're really living the life of a 60 year old person. That's where your biomedical, uh, uh, your biochemistry is actually uh, reacting as well. So again, it shows us that by you just being a little bit sleep deprived, you're taking away from your lifespan of your own life and you are putting yourself at a higher risk of having more oxidation to your cells and actually causing more pain and actually said before, at a higher risk of even having diabetes, hypertension, and also other autoimmune disease as well. That's the interesting part about all this stuff, that a lot of, a lot of lupuses and the MS and things that sort, even allergies um, start to really creep itself up once you actually um, are a little bit more sleep deprived as well. You know, and just give some numbers right now. You know, teenagers, even though we think teenagers can stay up forever, never, 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 they shouldn't, they still need about anywhere from eight to 11 hours of sleep per day. You know, so it's been shown that with a study that was done actually in Wales and also in Australia with a, a, a bunch of teenagers that actually uh, um, were, were actually done, there's about 5,000 uh, people in this study, that these teenagers were, again, sleep deprived only by an hour and a half. They were able to actually, you know, uh, set the alarm clocks and things like that and put them back into a good sleep range. Their SAT scores went up by 25%. Their actual um, daily attendance in school actually went up where almost all of them uh, that was in the study for over a year almost had perfect attendance. Their sports performance uh, actually went up. Basically, all their scores, everything else went up completely because of the fact that they had more alertness and they were actually able to accept more study and things of that sort. So it's a very, very true fact that if you get the amount of sleep you're supposed to get, especially um, from a kid's perspective, they're going to do far more better in school than um, kids that, and we also have seen it, a lot of kids that, that actually parents let them stay up very, very late. What tends to happen is, you know, they have more behavior issues as well because they are tired, things of that sort. Even now, um, I've, I've gotten a lot of calls about um, my sickle cell warriors are, are in the hospital, they're in pain, different things are going on. And, and the weather has something to do with it, but also think about the correlation between now it's summer and, you know, the first week uh, of staying up a little bit later was fun. And now they're into that routine of staying up later because it's the summertime. So it's, you know, I'm going to give them a break of things of that sort. So now what do you think is happening to, to the individual's body? If you go back to some of the information I just told you, is doing what? You're causing more inflammation. 
you have the body sleep deprived, so it's like cognitively and neurologically is not functioning on a higher level. A lot of the trace minerals that your body needs naturally to sort of, to sort of calm itself down and actually um, help your body be anti-inflammatory, what is it really going to do? It's going to actually cut things off and not allow you to actually absorb some of those things. So if you cause some more inflammation, you put yourself at a higher risk of doing what? Being in a crisis. You know, um, four of the main things... Uh, um, the body needs in order for it to, it to um, make melatonin, the, the, the one hormone that's been linked to actually putting your body into a good sleeping pattern. It needs folate acid, it needs uh, um, inusol, it needs magnesium, and also it needs zinc. Now, all well, the, the main three I always talk about, correct? I talk about folate, not folic acid, but folate acid, magnesium, and zinc all the time. All the time, all the time, all the time, right? So, if you already know as a sickle cell patient, you are lacking folic acid and not folic acid. Again, folic acid is a, is a synthetic form. And the research has been shown that if you use folate acid, zinc, and magnesium in an inner cell, you're able to allow your body to go into a better and then also a deeper sleep. And from a sickle cell standpoint, if you're already lacking the folate acid to be, to be produced properly inside your body, what do you think is going to happen if you're already um, being more sleep deprived because of the fact that it's the summertime? you're able to go into a crisis and also have more inflammation a lot more rarely because your body now is not going to be able to use that melatonin that's really designed to really uh, um, calm your body down. You know, have you be more anti-inflammatory, have your body repair itself on a daily basis, now is already backed up for, now let's say you're, all the kids been out of school for over a month now. So this is the cycle that, that tends to actually happen, especially in the summer, especially around this time. I've seen a cyclical thing that, that set, sort of happens every summer between the 4th of July and the first week or so of August that a lot of my sickle cell patients or I see online things of that sort, um, especially here in the United States, go into crisis. And the reason why, in, in my opinion, is because of the fact that one, yes, it's summertime to eat and drinking, like whatever, but in the same token, they're sleep deprived, so not allowing their body to actually heal and repair itself better and more efficiently as well. So, again, those three supplements, and if you can find in your saw, I, I, I N O S I L E. If you're able to find that, please, um, you know, start taking those. I'll give you the dosages um, later on in, inside of, of um, uh, a post, things of that sort. So, uh, again, the importance of sleep is because of the fact that all the hormones need to be released, all the trace minerals needs to um, help them out, as well as the tissue repair, as well as the membrane cognitive abilities, and also the neurological functions that actually um, um, happen for learning is really there when you also sleep as well. You guys got to really um, understand that, um, like I said yesterday, sleep is as, as important as you eating and also as you drinking. So you got to make sure that you guys are getting some, some really, really good sleep in there. Um, the other thing... I want to discuss really was um, how you guys doing. I hope you guys are doing uh, well. I see Miss Forrest all, online. So I'm, I'm just rambling today because uh, um, yesterday I forgot to tell you about the folate acid thing as well as the fact that I know you um, you guys, a lot of you, especially your caregivers, are not getting an adequate amount of sleep. And you're wondering why your blood pressure is higher. You're wondering why you're gaining weight. You're wondering why you have higher anxiety and things of that sort. It actually shows that you know once you're sleep deprived, all bats are off. You know, the anxiety shoots up, you know, the, the, the weight comes on, uh, the anger and things of that, um, of that sort comes on. It actually shows that even in, in, in males especially, when you're just only two hours sleep deprived per night for just one month, meaning like every night uh, um, for an entire month, your testosterone production goes down by 50%. So again, I make sure I get enough sleep myself, okay? And your, your libido and everything else goes off as well. So um, you guys ever, you know, are sitting somewhere and you sort of daze uh, or you sort of like go off in, into your own little world. And you're like, oh man, I, I sort of like, you know, I, I was, you know, daydream, whatever. Those are actually called micro sleeps, meaning that you're actually are going into, you're awake, but your body's shutting itself down for about 30 seconds or sometimes even a minute to actually get some rest because just how sleep deprived you are. You know, everyone does it. I mean, it's something that's kind of natural, but those individuals, if you find yourself sort of like, you know, like looking off in space a little bit more often or more times during the day, you are sleep deprived. Um, and then the ratio of that to actually pain. Now, you know, you notice a lot of times when um, individuals that have sickle cell disease um, or even other chronic diseases, you, you sort of notice them sort of staying off in space a lot. That means that their body's trying to rest and repair itself while they're trying to fight to actually stay up as well. 
So that's why I say, especially anybody with a chronic disease, and I proved it, and, and I hate to pat myself on the back, but you know, I just had a patient, um, uh, two patients um, earlier today. One had um, type 2 diabetes that he was able to reverse um, in the last eight weeks. He was able to, um, to reverse that according to all his tests, a one back in line and everything else. And I had um, also a sickle cell console as well that we've been able to sort of calm the pain down um, on a daily basis. What we did was really, I do the same thing I'm doing to you guys right now. I spoke to them really about making sure that they set their self up for, um, for success by actually saying, hey, look, no later than 10 o'clock at night, I'm going to go to bed. Even if I lie there for 15, 20 minutes, whatever, before I fall asleep, I'm just going to go ahead and do that. And I'll wake up whenever I wake up. Because I try to have individuals not to wake up with an alarm clock because I want your body to naturally wake you up. And yes, now it can be four o'clock in the morning beginning, or sometimes you can oversleep. You know, make sure you have your partners, you know, um, so, sort of wake you up. But, you know, I, I tell individuals, let your body rest and just get to a good rhythm of letting your body rest. And over a course of a month, and, and sometimes even shorter than that, you'll notice that you're able to lay down, fall asleep, wake up without an alarm clock and feel refreshed. What's that going to do from you biomedically? That's going to actually lower your blood pressure. That's going to actually lower your A1C. That's going to be, uh, make you more anti-inflammatory because your body is now able to repair itself on a nightly basis. The, the perception is I can train uh, uh, my mind and my body to work on less sleep. And that's a complete and utter fallacy. The reality of it is you're only functioning as high as your body or your sleep deprivations allow you to um, or, or, um, uh, function. I already told you that. It's about being sleep deprived for an hour and a half. You only are functioning at about 68% of your max capacity, your mental capacity. So if you're walking around, and like I said before, if you're you know, an employee and you're not giving your employer your, uh, the, the, the best you can give because you're not able to mentally you know, comprehend things, that's why you may be being passed up for a promotion or not you know, getting that raise that you want. Or if you're a manager or even if you're an entrepreneur and you're not able to do some of the deals that you used to be able to do, you're sleep deprived yourself. You're stressing yourself out to the point where you can't even do the, 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 the normal things you were able to do um, back in the day because you're now sleep deprived and you're stressing yourself out. Um, if you don't um, really recognize you know, when you're sleepy or the fact that you are sleep deprived, basically you're sleep deprived then because you're so used to functioning on a, on a certain basis. Being in medical school, we're, we're trained to be sleep deprived and function on a higher level, which is completely and utterly horrible because um, I know way too many physicians who, you know, took too much caffeine, took like the different things to keep themselves awake, um, and they coined them smart drugs, which was completely illegal to do anyway. Um, you know, and, and now they're paying the paying consequence for that because now they need that in order to function on a daily basis or they're completely burnt out already. You know, um, and, 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 and so on and so on. You, you, see that, you see that stuff in college and things of that sort. I mean, even myself, I actually work, um, I, I worked at night and put myself through college. So I was part of that, that, uh, um, that shift work for about four years. I, I worked at night in order to pay for myself to actually go to college. And I, I, I noticed how sleep the problem was. I would study all night long anatomy, physiology, biophysics. All these things, I knew it backwards and forwards while I was at work. I'd go to take the exam and I would fail the exam until I realized into my second year, hey, dude, I'm just completely tired and sleep deprived. So I had to you know, switch my schedule around and then I was able to, you know, to actually do better on my exams, things of that sort. Pain-wise, um, when it comes to myself, and I'm going to speak, speak only, only about myself right now, when, when I was doing things like that, yes, I was, I was experiencing daily pain, whether it was a full-on crisis or just a daily pain level of maybe a three in my arms, in my legs. I used to always get um, a pain <laughs> in my butt. Um, it, it was always, always my right butt. Yeah, I was always getting a pain in there. It was, it was crazy. It was my, my right butt, uh, my chest, or um, my arm. I was always having a little low-grade pain in that I would just keep functioning on. My fingers would, would, would go numb and tingling, things like that. So I'll just keep functioning, keep functioning because that's how I was used to doing. I recall the first time I got a full eight hours worth of sleep, I felt euphoric. I didn't feel as if I was real. I felt I was still in the, in, in, inside of a dream. But then that's why I noticed my athletic performance actually started to improve. I was also doing mixed martial arts at the same time. And then when I started to make that my norm, 
I mean, it was like sky's the limit. You know, it's like nothing's going to prevent me from getting my sleep. Occasionally, yeah, I throw myself off here and there for different projects that I'm working on. But for the most part, most part, I get my eight hours of sleep because I know how I feel. I know how I can think more efficiently and more function and function easier. I know the fact that you know I don't feel bad. I don't feel as if I'm inflamed or stiff. I don't feel as if I'm, I'm waking up in a stupor as well. So the the, the, the moral other story, guys, is, is really. As I'm speaking to parents right now, is if you really want your kids to thrive, if you want your kids to be the best that they can be, you know, forget about, you know, shoes, forget about the clothes, forget about all that stuff and just focus on please making sure your baby gets to bed at a good time and good, good sleep, have no electronics inside of the room um, and make sure that they're actually sleeping well. Trust me, you know, um, I've seen way too many individuals that, you know, even though they may be eight students when they get out of school and they already have bad sleep habits, that can put them into a depression mode that, that happens very quickly. One reason why a lot of kids have depression in school is because of the fact that they're sleep deprived, they have bad nutrition, and they have no support system. So that's the main thing. So make sure that your babies are sleeping well. And then two, also yourselves. Make sure that you're resting. Make sure that you're allowing your body to actually rest and recover. Because sleep is designed for what? Is for your body to repair itself. It's not designed, designed for you just to dream and things of that sort. You need to have your body repair. And sleeping five hours a night or six hours a night is not sufficient enough. The research shows you got to, especially as an adult, seven to nine hours is the, the optimal for you to be able to sleep. So if you know you have to be at work by about eight o'clock in the morning and you, you have to wake up you know by seven o'clock, you have to be in bed no later than ten o'clock because it takes you about about you know half an hour to forty minutes just to fall asleep. You know you may fall asleep, you know, like your eyes may be shut or whatever. You know, the research shows that you know your, your body still takes a time for actually going to a deeper sleep. So you want to make sure you're you're in bed by ten. So guys, you know, like I said yesterday, the reason why I want to keep you know approaching this whole thing is because of the fact that I'm, this is one, one of those things where people just don't understand why they have to go to bed at a certain time. So it's almost like I'm an adult, I can do, I can do what, whatever I want to do. Yeah, it's true, but you're also an adult so you can actually do what's best for you and your family as well. So I'm just trying to show you guys a different way um, to really think about health and healing just beyond you know, taking a supplement or just beyond me, me telling you a recipe and things of that sort. If you master sleeping... You master getting yourself in bed at a decent time. You master actually laying down there and letting all that stress and everything else go. You'll see that all those things don't matter and your body's going to start to respond to a lot better without having any supplementation and things of that sort. You know, the pain levels will go down. Your A1C will get back into alignment. The anxiety, that depression will start to sort of, you know, melt yourself away. But you got to make a, a, an effort to it. And again, if you guys want to approach upon this and go a little bit deeper with this, I can definitely do that a little bit more as well. But again... I only go up with what you guys ask me or, or, or an area I see patients really, really struggling with. And I think sleep is a huge one um, uh, for, from a chronic pain um, issue, the, the sleep insomnia that I see a lot of patients go through. This is what I work with. And, and especially if they're trying to take uh, um, sleep medication, I try to get them off that. And it, it's hard, but we do it. We get through it. And these individuals see the results over a period of time and they, they love it. So guys... Again, Dr. Charlie Ware, giving you as much information I can to make sure that as natural, as easy your life can be and actually more fulfilled so you can start living life without limits as well. Talk to you soon, guys. Love you all. Bye.